It's a hidden secret of the beauty industry, and many don't oh. know about it. Women, you're paying to put that in your hair. I'm not touching it. My son will not touch it. Automatic disqualified. They clean and treat this hair, making it look nice and shiny. Freaking but gross. the truth is, it's not virgin hair. It's straight God. <laughs> You, you've seen these lists that are making their way across these social media spaces. You've seen them on Instagram, you've seen them on TikTok, and one person puts out a list and another person puts out a list and all that stuff. I came up with the list. The old passport bros no-go list. Here you are by El Guapo himself. And the first one is a concept that I've always felt, but has never been verbalized and explained better by anyone than the honorable Hood's ordained minister, Minister Jap. Let me tell you guys about Minister Jap. Minister Jap was on the channel about two years ago. He used to have a saying that pretty faces matter. Pretty faces matter. You running around here with these handsome hoes with big booty. You just don't think. Mm. You are going to breed with that. Uh oh. Shout out to the minister. That's why I told you we don't have to start getting into selective breeding. Uh oh. Pick better gene. The ugly gene is dominant. There's every nigga I know who got a regular ugly face, the coldest body in the world. When they got married and had kids, that bitch looks. Terrible. I hate to say it. Thanks. Let's go. They will pass up on the Aaliyah. What? Get with a that look like Serena. Marry, have a baby with her. Now she look like a Medea. Are you hearing me? Listen. That nigga don't value himself or see vision. What do kids look like coming out this? That is raw and hard to digest, but it is true. Let me explain something to you all. My litmus test for a woman is can I wake up next to her in the morning? I'm on this pillow here. She's on this pillow here. And I look at her and I'm happy with what I'm looking at in the face. Men are visual, and this is not objectifying, but attraction is not negotiable. Would we agree there? Drop me a one in the chat if you agree with me that attraction is not negotiable. You like what you like. If it were negotiable, everybody would be in love with the sexy reds and the Sukiyanas, which most men are not. One of the things I love the most about Kevin Samuels is the fact that he actually made it okay for men to actually verbalize and publicly say what we've been thinking all along. But Minister Jap was a pioneer in this. Shout out to the minister. He was a pioneer when it came to this. Three simple words, pretty faces matter. I have four children, all of my children are exceedingly attractive. They're good looking kids. Morning, Dad. My first wife is in her 40s, good looking woman, still to this day. My white baby's mama, still super pretty in the face. My daughter with her is as cute as a button. And Guapito is a lady killer at eight and a half months old. His mother's name literally is the pretty. That matters. I remember watching AMS, shout out to Alpha Male Strategies. I used to watch AMS all the time. I still do, he just doesn't put out as much content. When I was going through my red pill journey, AMS is one of the first content creators that I ever found. I remember him getting a question, why am I having problems staying, you know, keeping it up with my lady and keeping interest in the women that I date and stuff like that. And AMS said three words, pick hotter chicks, pick hotter chicks. Attraction is not negotiable, but here's where a lot of fellas, especially 
my millennials and my zennials are starting to get it wrong is that you're falling for the false beauty. You're falling for the witchcraft, as they say, of the makeup, of the fake hair, of the BBLs. There are two plastic surgeries that I don't have a real problem with. One is chest augmentation, because there's nothing that a woman can do in the gym to make her chest the way that she might actually want it. As long as it's not huge and ridiculous, I can deal with that. The other one is rhinoplasty. I dated a girl from Slovakia, beautiful girl. Shout out to her. Great body, pretty face and everything, but she had a, a, a big nose. She had a big hump in her nose right here. Man, she went and had her nose done. Woo! Bumped her up about a point and a half. So I'm not against all plastic surgery, but stuff that you can fix in the gym, I'm totally against. You can go to the gym and lose weight. You don't need liposuction. You can go to the gym and plump up your derriere as a woman. Get a trainer, let them know what you're trying to accomplish, eat the right stuff, do the right workout, you can make it happen. But the one thing that bothers me more than anything else, in anything else, well, this would be the second thing. Well, no, this is the first thing, because I will not date a woman that does this. Will not do it. If I were single, I would not even consider doing it. A guapo does not do fake hair. We don't play that. And I know a lot of you brothers, I was explaining this to Le Lebea today. A lot of you are products of your environment. You, th it, This is all that you've ever had around you. This is all that you have ever seen. And this is why it's so imperative for you to step foot outside of the borders of this country and go see the rest of the world. Because guess what? When you see these women with their natural hair, when you see these women that take the time and eat the right things, uh, take biotin supplements, things that will help grow their hair. They have a whole hair care routine. My wife has one. She has one. I'm telling you, you know, my wife has special products that she gets from Columbia to put in her hair to make sure it's nice and silky and shiny. She has jet black curly hair and it's beautiful. But she works so hard to keep it like that. And here's what I'll tell you. Just talking to my sisters, the hair thing is a no go for me. But if you were on the fence and I give anybody permission to take this next section section of the video, and send it out, clip it up and send it out because I don't think people know this. Shout out to Coach Keith for sending me this clip and I want you to see where all this fake hair comes from. Did you know that most affordable human hair extensions come from city drains? That's right. In India, workers actually collect hair from public drains and plug holes. They clean and treat this hair, making it look nice and shiny. But the truth is, it's not virgin hair. It's straight from the drain. This is the only reason human hair extensions are still affordable. Otherwise, they would all cost thousands of dollars. It's a hidden secret of the beauty industry, and many don't know about it. Would you still buy them knowing this? Share your thoughts and spread the word. Yo, Coach Keith, when I saw this, bro, I was like, wow, but it makes sense. And you've got it right there in your face on freaking camera. They are getting hair out of drains in India and putting it together. Yo, I think about when I shower and I take care of myself. But you know what goes down that drain, yo? Cubes, booty hairs, all manner of things goes down that drain. People shave their armpits and stuff, and these women are paying money to put this type of crap in their hair. So before you are so willing to accept, but oh, it looks good on her, just like y'all be accepting the tattoos, men's hair just think about it like this the girl that you're going out with that has all them extensions and it looks her hair is what they called it laid and all that side all that stuff you know laid to the side and all that and you put your hand on her head you, you get into it and you put your fingers in her hair might be touching 
a man's hair. Y'all better stop accepting just anything when it comes to women. Here's the thing, passport bros. I am going to always hold you to a higher standard. You are a global representative for this movement, for what we have going on here. So you do not get to be a pervert. Shout out to Minister Jap. You don't get to be a monger. You don't get to go over there and be a freaking pookie. We did a live about that. You are to re represent our culture, our community, and our country in the best way possible. And I will personally accept nothing less. Does that mean that you can't go out and, and party and have a good time? No. Does that mean that you can't go out and have several menages and 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 walk walk 3000 contests with the girls come in and you have prize money? No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is you can't uh, accept the most gutter butt chicks here or abroad. And one of the first things that you see when you see these women that are acting a fool, that are out of their mind, the first thing you see is they got some type of issue with their hair. I'm just saying. Did you know that most affordable human hair extensions come from city drains? That's right. In India, workers actually collect hair. Look at that. Look at all the specks of dirt and stuff. The hair in the drains is mixed in with the dirty soapy water. If it's coming from, you know, people peeing in the shower and stuff like that, you want that. Women, you're paying to put that in your hair, especially black women, you have the most Versatile hair on the planet. And instead of cultivating and growing your hair out, you're gonna put it in your head. I ain't touching it. I'm not touching it. My son will not touch it. Automatic no-go. Disqualified, I'm not doing it. I'd rather you be bald like Jada. Shout out to Jada. Hair from public drains and plug holes. They clean and treat this hair, making it look nice and shiny. Freaking but gross. the truth is, it's not virgin hair. It's straight from the drains. It's a hidden secret of the beauty industry, and many don't oh. know about it. Would you still buy them knowing this? Share your thoughts and spread the word.